Margaret, thank you. It's a real privilege as a uh, retired senior leader of the Asia Society to get the podium. And uh, let me just say for, for all of you to, uh, to know that Ken Wilcox, who is the current chairman, uh, is recovering from treatments or he would be here. And I would like to thank him, fa frankly, for the idea of this conference, and we wish he were here. Um, <clears throat> I uh, uh, heard two names that I haven't heard for a long time, uh, Zhang Zemin and Zhu Rongji. And uh, Elizabeth, uh, you know, frankly, and Mary Kay, th that, that was a great discussion. It sort of, for me, brought it all together in a very important way, uh, this conversation today. And uh, the, the notion uh, that those two leaders would take the time to write a note to President Xi, uh, with I, I assume that you have read it. <laughs> yeah, no, but but uh, uh, you know, I, 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 my stay uh, in uh, Hong Kong and China uh, was, I, I, I would say, um, uh, defined in a very important way by Zhu Rongji and, and uh, Zhang Zemin. And, and Zhu Rongji being the great reformer uh, at that time uh, just bring, brings back lots of memories and lots of thoughts about how important it is uh, to work together and to see this moment uh, as yet another moment uh, when we have to think about uh, reform and moving forward. And um, let me just say at a very high level, um, it has been a, an amazing uh, ride with the uh, growth of China and with the 2013 uh, 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 reform agenda. And uh, for those of us who've been watching that agenda very carefully, and I think it's fair to say are all disappointed that there have not been more actions taken in response to that. Uh, we are now at a point where, uh, to me, the most important thing to watch is uh, uh, outcomes in China. And we at the Asia Society, along with a number of friends and thought leaders, uh, have, have begun to examine the question of uh, reform in the context of outcomes. And the Asia Society is publishing something called the Dashboard, uh, which is looking still at uh, uh, the reform agenda in the context of a series of metrics to watch uh, developments going forward. I think that is a very important way to think about China. And I uh, am quite skeptical of uh, uh, analyses that try and game what's going on inside the system. And uh, that being said, I'm a data guy. I'm, uh, um, uh, I, I, I love to uh, um, uh, examine things like we examine today. What is 2025? I thought there was a very rich conversation about uh, a short paper and then a lot of things being uh, uh, added to it in terms of market share. Um, I was struck by the quality of the conversation about intellectual property. I mean, it really helps me to understand that we still are in the early stages of this game. Um, the conversation about artificial intelligence, uh, I mean, it's amazing when you look at the number of experts in the world and where they are and where they've been educated and what's happening. Uh, this is, uh, to me, an encouraging conversation about the importance of China and the world, not just the United States, working together on this agenda as we move forward. And I suggested to Margaret uh, several months ago that um, Made in China 2025 was a really important and interesting concept, and I'm one of these optimistic people who are inclined to think that if we are in 2025, and the brain power and leadership and institutional underpinning that exists in the United States and in China 
uh, produces a result that is about uh, science uh, and competitiveness on a large scale, that there's a very good chance that the U.S. and China will arrive at that point in time very equal in many respects. I mean, a lot of things that were discussed today give me optimism. Some things give me pessimism. But the question that I ask myself and I would like to ask everyone here today is, assuming we arrive at that point, on a relatively equal platform, what can we do between now and then to figure out how to live together as partners uh, in a way that will make that outcome uh, a benefit for the world and a benefit for both of our countries? And I heard words like communication and trust uh, today. I, I think we all know and I think we all share a similar vision about the importance of getting there you know, as partners. Uh, if it's a zero-sum game, it's going to be unpleasant. And I think if it's a zero-sum game, America loses, if that's even important to think about. So, Margaret, I would like to think of this as uh, made in China 2025 1.0. <laughs> and let's look forward to 2.0, 3.0. And I think I said to somebody today an interesting uh, uh, thought would be to get this room half full of friends from China and half full of friends from here so that the dialogue could really be uh, a two-way conversation. Uh, that would be my hope. I think the Asia Society is dedicated uh, to building bridges, to finding pathways, to making the U.S.-China relationship a productive one. And this is just another one of those uh, stones in the creek that we're stepping on. So, Margaret, thank you very much for convening us all together today. And you have the last word. Thank you, Jack. Yes, we definitely have our work cut out for us. I'd like to thank all of our speakers. Some of you traveled from very far. Chuck, you traveled 10 hours in a car just from LA to be here. We really appreciate that. I'd like to give a shout out again to our team. Can you guys please stand up? You guys have been working countless hours. Thank you for making it happen. Matt Rowett in particular. All the videos will be available online and uh, please stay in touch with us. Feel free to hang out. Thank you very much.